So to me, free speech is not when you see something good and then you purposely write bad. To me, that's very dangerous speech. And you become angry at it. But that's not free speech. Well, debating the First Amendment, a lot of folks have a lot of opinions, President Trump among them, inviting prominent right-wing social media voices to a summit at the White House today. Now, Facebook and Twitter representatives were not invited. He says they were going to have a meeting next week. Here's what Mediaite has to say about this. Meet the conspiracy theorist, clout chasers, and MAGA diehards attending Trump's social media summit. And here's CNN's take. Many Democrats, independents, and even some Republicans are saying, look, this has not been so much a summit as a hit job on big social media companies, a preemptive attack to paint them as unfair and beat them into submission just as the 2020 race is heating up. So if Team Trump gets into any trouble during the election, they can throw up their hands and say, see, we told you, they're unfair. Okay, so let's talk to two of the people who were there today. The Vice President of Communications at the Heritage Foundation, Rob Bluey, and the founder of Turning Point USA, Charlie Kirk. Good to have you both with us tonight. Thank you. Okay, so let's start there. I mean, there's plenty of, of criticism of you guys, who you are. Uh, the Southern Poverty Center, uh, Southern Poverty Law Center, you're familiar with, said this. Bringing these groups together is beyond irresponsible. It is essentially conducting a hate summit at the White House. Charlie, your response? It's too bad that the SPLC has really descended into a group that overuses this word hate, 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 because it really cheapens actual hate in this country. Uh, what I saw in, in, in the White House today were patriots that were proud to support their president that have experienced widespread difficulty on social media and it's it's too bad because the media is playing into this and it's really funny they say oh the conspiracy theorists are there well no it's actually the media itself that was engaging in conspiracy theories with this Russia hoax over the last year I mean, some of the stuff they were allowed to be printed and put on the airwaves was was anything but factual and so they're actually projecting some of the very own faults that they have themselves onto the audience today I think a lot got covered and I think there might be some very exciting and uh, important follow-through thanks to this meeting. Okay, so you know a lot of these folks will say there's not really a, a bias against you. There's, it's not really happening, but by continuing to have summits like this and ginning it up, I mean, you're getting people all excited and saying, oh, conservatives are, are losing out on social media. On The Verge, uh, under the headline, the White House Social Media Summit has an ulterior motive. They wrote this. The fact remains that despite the liberal leanings, which they concede, of many tech workers, social platforms have been an unqualified boon to the conservative movement. Rob? Well, there's no question about it. I mean, organizations like the Heritage Foundation and Turning Point USA have used social media effectively. The president acknowledged that. I mean, today was partly a celebration of the success that conservatives have on social media, but it was also an opportunity to point out some of the real bias that we have seen. I mean, our own organization has had content removed. We've had one of our uh, employees suspended temporarily, later apologized by Twitter. So, I mean, there are times that we've, we've seen these companies overstep and not be clear about their own policies and practices. And that's, I think, what we were trying to point out today and what needs to be addressed. Well, and, and look, it doesn't, isn't it amazing we're able to point to actual specific examples of people being shadow banned or delisted, having videos demonetized? I think one of the most amazing statistics is the imbalance of political contributions from Google employees. Over a million dollars given to Hillary Clinton, zero zero dollars to Donald Trump. And these companies have an amazing amount of power, but they also have a responsibility to make sure they're neutral platforms, not biased publishers. Well, you know, many of them, though, will say, we have a responsibility to take down content that is harmful, and they're getting a lot of pressure. Uh, and you see what's happening in Europe. These massive fines are being threatened with over there. This is how they see it. Um, Jessica Gonzalez, founder of Change the Terms Coalition, told The Hill this. She says, I see the summit as a propaganda tool to pressure social media companies to allow hate, racism, xenophobia, and religious bigotry, homophobia, to run wild. Rob? Shannon, there were over 250 people in the room for this summit. I mean, you're, it, the media is picking out, you know, a handful of people who they may disagree with. But the fact of the matter is there are mainstream groups in that, in that room today. And I think that the conversation was productive because we talked broadly about all of the concerns. There were half a dozen members of Congress. I mean, would you apply that characterization to them as well? I don't think so. The fact of the matter is that these companies have not been transparent about some of their policies and practices. And often times they've had a backtrack when they do make mistakes and oftentimes they are labeled as hateful content it's hateful content by the liberals who are living in Silicon Valley and writing those rules and so right, often right. they call these isolated instances but when you have an a, a entire room with amazing amount of stories that's not isolated incidents right. it's a pattern we need to leave it there well and those groups we understand are gonna have a meeting at the White House at least the president says next week so that's that side of the story all right thank you both thank for coming you. in thank you